How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome into another episode of NAISB. Got Carly Fitzer, got myself Reagan Harrell, and I'm dripped out. I got my Indiana Tech gear on tonight. Shout out Coach Z uh, and the Warrior fam sending in a little, little, little care package. Appreciate it. Got, got the hat, got the hat, the little buckle hat. Perfect. Good stuff. Good stuff, Carly. I like it. Yep. Shout out Coach Z. Great stuff there. Um, wow. A lot of upsets this weekend. Uh, some top 25 matchups. A lot to talk about. Uh, we're going to do a weekend recap. We're going to do a midweek preview. Uh, we have, man, I don't want to spoil it. I'm fired up for the interview we got coming up th uh, this week. And Carly, I got to tell you about it. I just uh, confirmed it up, but I'll tell you about it. I should have told you before we start recording. I'll tell you. And actually, I'll, we'll pause the recording. I'll tell you, and then we'll come back. All right? Okay. Okay. Uh, Pretty good ones, yeah, Carly. Yeah, yeah. Good ones. Good ones. I have to. Might have to go check the audio there. Make sure we didn't. Uh, start make sure there's nothing well. in there. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh. Well. Uh. Well, let's talk about. Do what? I was a little excited. A little excited. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um. Update on Chompers. He's still there. Um. Nothing's been done. The alligator's still there. I have to take business into my own hands. I have to get some barbecue gator up on the grill. Oh my God. We'll see. <laughs> I have to get have to, that you may or may not be legal, so I'm joking, uh, obviously. Uh, but let's talk. <laughs> well, he's he's on property. He he's in the apartment complex. He's a threat to Rue. He's a threat to the other dogs. Got to get him out. Hey, people! I, people cook gator. So good. Gator's good. Chicken tastes like chicken. Gator needs his get. Bang! It's a great movie. Great movie. Great pool. Great Thank pool. You. Great pull. Will Ferrell, Midland mm -hmm. softball fan. Fact. <laughs> yep. All right. Um, let's talk about it. Let's start with College of Idaho taking three or four from Southern Oregon. Pretty big one out there in the Cascade, and it sets up one heck of a series for the Cascade regular season title this weekend about College of Idaho uh, and uh, Oregon Tech. Obviously, we'll talk more about that one on the next episode of NAISB. On the episode after, by the way, on NAISB, we're going to do our end of season awards. So make sure where uh, uh, y'all are sending it, sending in some nominations. If you, if you want to coach of the year, player of the year, pitcher of the year, freshman of the year. That's it. Four of them. Yep. That's what we're doing. All right, let's get into it. College of Idaho takes three or four from Southern Oregon game one. Good old class cascade classic off rip eight to six college of idaho takes game one to, t to start the series however it would be piper love getting this anticipated top 25 matchup started with a two-run shot in the first inning madeline powell will would tie it up in the bottom half of the first with uh, an rbi double we'll bring up miss powell's name again here in just a second uh hannah clavell got the Ra raiders uh back on top with a solo shot Raiders would go on to score three more unanswered, taking a 6-2 lead into the bottom of the six, where the Yotes would play a little ABC softball, three singles, a little fielder's choice, a little walk, a little sack fly, and all of a sudden it's a one-run game. Bottom of the seventh, Lolo Walker would tie it up with a solo shot. She had a heck of a weekend for College of Idaho. Uh, and then Madeline Powell, she would call a game with a moonshot, the right field, eight six. Carly, what a game! What a way to get get classic. a top twenty five started. Yeah, instant classic. Love a good walk off. Yep, game two was just about as good. This time, College of Idaho uh, would be the ones jumping out uh, to a bigger lead at first, three nothing uh, after the third inning. But Kennedy, uh, Kyla, and Katie Machado would combine for four point two shutout innings out of the bullpen to silent the Yotes bats. Hannah Clavel, again, who had a really nice series, uh, would score a pair on a uh, two RBI double in the fourth inning. And Kyla, again, uh, she got it done in the circle with two and two thirds uh, shutout ball. But in the batter's box, she had an RBI double to score Piper Love to tie the game to six. And then she would come around to score the game winning run uh, on an infield sing single from Clavel. So we were all tied up after the first doubleheader the next day on Saturday. Man, we got we got. I tell you, all these games were great. Uh, they were two, we had two one run games, two uh, two run games, and look, it's hard to beat uh, that eight, eight six games with four or five homers, two home runs in the bottom. So you can't beat that. But y'all know me, y'all know I love my pitching, and Annie Polster and Katie Machado spun some phenomenal games. Uh, both both of them did. Polster only gave up two 
two hits, did not allow one run. Hattie Haruza was the lone player to have an RBI. She's also the only player to have multiple hits in the game. Machado uh, has been having a great year, stepped up uh, being the number one pitcher for Southern Oregon. But Annie Polster, who has done that for College of Idaho this year. And look, they don't have some of the kind of brand names you, uh, that we've had. We've talked about the, this story with College of Idaho, but Annie Polster has become an ace. And then they've been stepping up um, and getting combined pitching wins, which is what they would do in game four with four pitchers coming in um, and and pitching. Grace Near would lead the way with five and a third innings of one run ball. Uh, four RBIs coming from four different Yotes, Slowly Walker, Lexi, uh, Navarrete, Lindsey Jones, and Lena uh, Z- Zosnier. Uh, would would have the four RBIs and a 4-2 win. Huge for College of Idaho. And, hey, look, I, honestly, I thought it was going to be split city. thought it was going to be two or two. If I thought three or four, maybe I I, I probably would have – I, I would have picked Southern Oregon. Someone said some, one team was going to win three or four. I mean, hand up, I would have said Southern Oregon. I'm not going to lie to the people. That would be wrong. That's a bad thing to do. But, Carly, from a content standpoint, from everything we want – this is what what we want. We got the Cascade coming down to the last weekend, a matchup uh, between two old coaching friends, Al Mendiola, Greg Stewart, coming down for his, uh Cascade regular season title. Fire me up. Dude, it's going to be electric. And then for you to get to be out there for um, the tournament. Oh, I can't wait. Content mm-hmm. is going to be up there. I know it's like, all right, where am I going? <laughs> Who's going to be hosting? You know, I think that's a fun thing with the Cascade. Not a ton, a ton of conferences do it, but this it's the conference. When you win, you get, you get a chance to host. That's pretty cool. So, um, obviously, massive series, uh, probably the biggest series uh, down uh, down the stretch uh, or down in uh, the final week or weekend of NAI softball. There's some big ones. Uh, a lot more we'll talk about uh, on Friday's episode, obviously. But speaking of old rivalries, had one of the crossroads. Yeah. yeah. Iowa Marion, uh, they split game one. Marion takes it actually a zero zero ball game headed into the seventh, uh, a little bit of a pitcher's duel. Marion opened it up. Lily went singles up the middle score on RBI. Um, Savannah Harwiger, she scores two more with a double to center. And then Brooke Knox adds one more sack bunt. Olivia Stunkel, she goes the distance, um, only goes up three hits with eight strikeouts. Game two was a little bit, um, more back and forth. It was four three Iowa. They get the they save themselves from a sweep. Briley Bilger has a great game. We'll come back to her. She got things going in the first. She has a solo shot. Um, Marion ties it up in the second with a single from Caroline Root. Briley Bilger again continues to have a day in the fifth. She scores um, two with a sack fly. Marion ties it up in the sixth. Double from Hoffman and Harwiger single. Um, Briley Bilger again. She goes three for three on the day. Four RBIs has an RBI bunt single um, to close things out. Elena Thomas, she goes five, one earned run, three Ks. Alyssa Wagner closes it out. Um, she allows two hits and two earned runs. Yeah, and there's another crossroads matchup I had in top of my mind. I don't think we put it – yeah, we didn't put it in the notes, but just thinking about Marion um, and Spring Arbor splitting as well and just pulling up the crossroads league and how it's looking going into – the final week. So um, Spring Arbor's four games back, Marion's a game back, and Indiana Wesleyan, who's sitting there 25-7 uh, and seven in conference play, has got that one-game lead over Marion. So going to be a crazy last week. Again, we'll, we'll talk more about games coming up on, on Monday's e- episode um, for the weekend, but just looking at ahead at Marion, who has two extra games. They got four games against Taylor and two against uh, Mount Vernon Naz, who are – you know, the right now sit in the five, six spot in the conference wanting to get, get up. Uh, they want to jump one another, try to jump spring Arbor. Um, if, if they can string some wins and it, with Indiana Wesley and playing spring Arbor, uh, with Mount and Mount Marinaz and Taylor playing Mary and a lot can happen in that conference. Uh, obviously Indiana Wesley and sitting in the driver's seat, but big games against spring Arbor. We'll talk a little bit more about those coming up, uh, down here in my neck of the woods though, Carly, Oh, we're set up. We're set up. We're set up just like the Cascade. It's perfect down here in the Sun Conference. Uh, we're going to have Coastal Georgia versus St. Thomas. They're tied up, and Lord, it was a crazy way to get there. We'll tell you about uh, tell you about Southeastern and Coastal Georgia here in a minute. But y'all, you know, I got to talk about Weber real quick. Uh, took two against the St. Thomas Bobcats, number nineteen. St. Thomas shut them out, eight nothing and two nothing. How about this, Carly? Jenna Shadowin, senior. Pitched four years for Weber, 
great pitcher for us, reliable arm, threw her first no hitter of her college career on senior okay. day, last start at Nancy Nichols Field against number 19, St. Thomas. You got to love sports. Got it. I love that. Yeah, but they, those two losses were big on the national uh, scene. One, I mean, hey, call it what it is. Kept Weber season alive. Got a chance to go down to Flow Mo, get some wins, maybe make the conference tournament. Come on, go Warriors. Y'all know how it is. But uh, for St. Thomas, those are two big losses, huge losses for St. Thomas. I mean, those are unranked uh, losses against a non-top 25 team. Now, don't get me wrong, Southeastern and Coastal went into Weber and dropped one, but lose a series against Weber, it's tough for St. Thomas. And now they're tied with what happened up in Brunswick. So first off, it was a good start for the Bobcats actually in that series with Southeastern jumping up uh, to a one nothing lead in the series. They won game one for nothing. I told y'all last week, I told y'all a couple weeks ago, Eden Playa, she, uh, she's definitely going to be up for that freshman of the year uh, when we get, when we're talking about, if we had a freshman pitcher of the year, she would certainly have her name up there. Her ERA is well south of one now with a complete game, five hit, one walk shut uh, performance, a uh, shutout performance against this really good Coastal Georgia Mariner lineup. Lauren Seconder, a uh, couple base knocks, two or four in RBI. Riley McKinney, RBI and a run. A couple of names that uh, talked about in the preview for this series uh, that would be big, Big for them, big down the stretch. Um, obviously know about the speed and a, a little bit about uh, the power with Leah Gonzalez, who we'll talk a little bit more about here in a second. But um, a very good win. After I saw this one from Southeastern, it was like, okay, this is the Southeastern's back. Maybe they're about to go up here, take uh, take a couple from a young Coastal Georgia team. But that very young Coastal Georgia team would bounce right back. Uh, Southeastern would have a 6-1 lead heading into the bottom of the seventh inning, uh, they made it to one on a wild pitch in the sixth. That would have been a tough way uh, to, to lo lose it. It would have been a tough way to lo lose a series for Coastal Georgia. But when they were down to their last out, Rory Rhodes would score Riley Andrews. Leadoff walk in the seventh in, in a one-run ball game, Carly. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. And then just ground out, ground out on third, poke one through, tie game, and then single, single from uh, Bryce Peacock and Riley Mills. Uh, Riley Mills, another one of uh, freshmen that's going to have uh, her, her name in uh, con contention with the season she's having. But her and Bryce Peacock, they each got their third hits there in the bottom of the seventh to load it up for the youngster Juliana Bats. Freshman walked it all. 3 2 win for Coastal Georgia. And then in, in a huge uh, rubber matchup, 9 4 Coastal Georgia game, a lot closer uh, than that. We'll take you through it. Bryce Peacock would hit a two run shot to give Coastal Georgia lead early, but. Uh, Southeastern would score three unanswered, two from Leah Gonzalez, an RBI double and a solo shot, providing the big bat in that fire lineup. They were up four, uh, four to two, um, and then it's what Coastal Georgia can do. They can they can make it get out of hand in a hurry, and they did in the sixth. They scored a touchdown, put up seven, went up nine to four. Uh, bases clearing double from Riley Andrews. Scary stuff. We talked about, remember, we talked about last week with Coastal Georgia, those freshmen becoming sophomores, and that's true across the country, and the five hits the freshmen got off Annalise. I just mentioned a lot of freshmen in there for Coastal Georgia starting to pick it up this time of the year. They got a chance to go down to St. Thomas. Going to be some much must-watch uh, softball Thursday and Friday down there to win the Sun Conference regular season. Yeah, dude. Don't sleep on the freshmen. Don't. I'll tell you what, <laughs> a lot of stuff going on in the Southern states right now. There and are. We, we said uh, a couple couple weeks ago when we were talking about conference tournaments, what's going to be the big ones, what's going to be the fun ones where anything can happen. We've kind of seen this year in the Southern states, it's a, it's, it's a fluid conference. You, you know, William Carey, Mobile, kind of the, the top dogs, Mill Georgia State, but they've – all three of those have shown they can lose anybody in this conference. A lot of people yeah. would argue still meant, uh, that fourth best team in the conference. Is Tennessee Southern about to sneak in here and be a five or be that five or six seed that went, wins the conference because they just beat William Carey twice. They just beat Stillman twice this weekend, Carly. You know, they might be getting hot at the right time. I mean, two really big wins this weekend. Um, against Stillman, they take game one, seven, three, pretty much all of Tennessee Southern Haley Barnes, two for three. She has a run in an RBI, um, Hannah Lindsay, three for four RBI. 
um, Haley Parrott really big two RBI. And then Cassie Davis goes the full game, allowing just two earned runs with seven hits. Um, but the, I'm really impressed with how they stuck it out um, in game two, right? especially when it got down to the seventh. Um, but they scored their five in the top of the first and one of the third. Um, held on to that lead the whole game. Stillman got their scoring going in the third. They score one. Um, and then things got really interesting in the bottom of the seventh. They score four. They have a pair of home runs, um, but they fall just short. Hannah Lindsay, Cassie Davis, and Michaela McCain, they both or they all three go two for four. Cassie Davis records an RBI. Um, Haley Parrott and Stella Gibreath, they record an RBI. And then Stella Gibreath as well in the circle goes six and two thirds, seven hits, two earn runs, eight strikeouts against a very solid Stillman team. Look, I feel like the Southern States Conference Tournament is going to be who is playing the best softball at that time because they are so close. And what we're seeing from Tennessee Southern down the stretch, it's like it, it would be crazy. Like nobody, nobody. If, if anybody other than folks that wear orange and red for – that's their primary. I guess orange and red. That's their primary colors. Something For sure. Like that. It, it, it's it, it's a it's a good looking Firebird logo. It's a good looking logo. It's it's nice, but still, nobody would pick them to, to win that conference. I don't know how many people would have picked them to. I don't know if I would have picked them to go in the conference tournament. But that's the, that's what makes them sneaky, especially with them heating up right now. Yeah, and I mean Cassidy Davis getting it done from uh, both sides, uh, offensively and defensively. They're scary. They're a scary team uh, coming down. The stretch. Um, I'll tell you another scary team. <laughs> and I know Tennessee Southern's glad not to be playing them anymore in the conference, at least. Good Lord. Cumberland's <laughs> back to back Mid South Conference champions. They are, they uh, are still undefeated. Uh, still got a tough one. Got some tough ones against Campbellsville coming up. God, other than that, that's really all the standing in between them. I, I believe that's it. And then that's all their conference games left. Just those four against Campbellsville. I yeah. mean, they they just rolled against Lindsey Wilson, had one scare, a little walk off knock, good stuff. But I mean, you know, not they, they hold on. They've won twenty seven in a row. I mean, we've talked a ton about them this year. Not much else to say. You know, they're one of the most athletic uh, groups. You see the play uh, Carly Oliver made on our uh, we post on Instagram. Dude, yes. dude. that was a <laughs> heck of a play. Jesus, talk had... about giving up your body for a ball. I was like, like a soccer goalie out there trying to say, yeah, one. yeah, it's uh, good stuff. They continue to roll. Um, Moving on to the heart. Let's move on to the heart. Dang. Benedictine. It was, it was set up. This was set up to have what we got in the sun conference. What we got in the cascade. Graceland had another, had some other ideas. Graceland uh -huh. took two from them. Uh, big upset. Wednesday, those just went final. I'll actually go go ahead and talk about Benedict and Grandview because those games just went final. Let me uh so so go ahead. I'll I'll, I'll look a little bit on that. Okay. Um, Benedictine loses a couple. Uh, wait, no, they split. They split. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I wrote it wrong. Uh, they split with Grandview. Game one, they win at seven six. Bailey Kenor, have Ooh. a day. Ooh. Four for four, two runs, three RBIs. Not far behind her, Claire Heights, two for three, three RBIs. Abby Presgrove uh, gets it done scoring the run. She's two for three, scores four runs. Um, Bailey Selvage, not much to say. Complete game, eight hits, four and runs, seven strikeouts. Grandview, Grandview bounces back game two. They win eight, seven. Vea Randall, two RBIs. Jessica Wall Jasper, two for three, two RBIs, a run and a home run. Um, and another home run from Rachel Anderson. She gets an RBI in two runs. Maddie Huseman, six and a third, 13 hits, six earn runs, just three strikeouts. Um, yeah, and then they they lose two more to Graceland, which kind of kind of puts a little – puts them in a tough spot for the heart. Well, that the, the, – as far as far as winning the heart, they can't win it. I mean, CMU's got it. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about yeah. CMU here here in a minute. Um, with, with them being Grandview today and that wrapping it up. Um, but yeah, I mean, you just mentioned, but looking at those Graceland games, I mean, just softball, wild ones. I mean, Benedictine, yeah. uh, okay. was up up five one in, in yeah. uh in that one was up four uh four nothing after uh Rihanna, Rihanna. Yeah. Either one sounds good. 
Rhiannon. 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 Yeah. Rhiannon. Rhiannon yeah. Martin. That's it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Make sure we got it right. Uh, four nothing. Um, and then Cassidy James had added RBI single, uh, make, making it five one. But uh, they lo- uh, Graceland, they loaded it up in, in the sixth inning, and then Jay Jay to Gay slam slam grand, grand slam. salami grand slam. Then a little uh, walk off on a throwing error. Jeez, throwing error uh, from from Cassidy James. That's rare in the bottom of the seventh. And Graceland won it uh, six five. And you lose a game like that, it just takes the wins out of your cell. And looks like that's what happened in the second game today. And absolutely credit uh, to Sammy Bradshaw. Seven innings, three hits, two walks, five Ks. Have a day in the circle. And for Graceland, yeah, big really wins. Good. I mean, big wins for Graceland to get them at uh, 10 and 11. Let me pull up the the updated heart standings after that because I know that's going to change some stuff. And I, I'll tell you another thing while we're on, on the note, and I know this is in, in the notes and we're going to talk about it later, but – do you imagine two weeks ago if you would have said Baker's got a pretty good chance of being the two seed now in the tournament? How about the run the Baker Wildcats are on? I can't. I think you know what? I think we doubted them a little bit, little lit a little bit of a fire. They're on an eight eight nothing run. Well, they'd be listening. We they uh they <laughs> if we uh we we fired them up for sure. Um, okay, now that's not what I want from the Heart website. That's the I don't care about the schedule. I won't. Uh, great podcasting, Carly. How, how was how was the weekend? How was the weekend? Oh, it was good. I uh, I had my last weekend. I run a little camp. Um, oh, nice. for some some rec players. So it's it's fun. They're they're all really young. Like there's some kindergartners, some first graders. I'd say a lot more talking gets done than softball, but teaching them what we can. Carly Fitzer, for the people, for yeah. the kids, for the kids. For the kids. I don't know. One of them asked me today, she was like, is it midday yet? And I was like, well, yeah, I suppose. Is it midday? What What, what does she mean by that? What? Just, what I, I, I don't know if she was asking the time or what. I was like, yep. It's, it's noon, so yeah, it's midday. Oh yeah. All right, I can't pull up the standings. I don't know. It's just it, it just keeps pulling up the last year's. All right, I had it pulled up earlier, and now I can't. Now I, I had it pulled my laptop. I can't pull it up. Where we're gonna keep rolling with this. Um, but I do I do know uh that now if Benedictine drops one to CMU and um if Baker wins out, they'll be they'll be the two seed, which is yeah. you know credit. Credit to them, um, you know, obviously unique stuff going on there and Coach Austin taking over as head coach for the rest of the year and he's taking it and run with it um, 8-0 the last couple of weeks. So, credit to them. Good job, Coach Tony, getting it done. Uh, speaking of getting it done, CMU, they're getting it done. And Madison people? White, how we doing, Madison? Yes, <laughs> Madison killed it. Uh, Madison White killed it. Um, uh, three for four in the 4-2 game one win, scored a run. Madison Roberts. Three for five. Game went eight innings. Uh, this was the Jordan Ball, Jessica Wall, Jasper game. They did not disappoint. Uh, Jordan Ball had eight Ks. Jessica Walt. Interesting uh, stat line from uh, Jessica Wall, Jasper. Seven walks and twelve strikeouts. Uh, definitely lived up to to the hype. Though. I mean, guy got them on uh, a lot of walks, but stranded them a lot. Uh, Dally Garland, a hell of a play there uh, at third third base. I uh, don't know if you saw that one. They they tagged us uh, in it on, on Twitter, but great, great um stuff there uh from garland by the way tag us and stuff please tag us and stuff tag us up on twitter instagram let us know help us help us get the info help us get the info we appreciate it talk to your sids we'll appreciate it um ga- game one madison white again solid performance two for four with the run madison roberts again the madisons heck of a day for the madisons of central methodist um madison, hey, madison. roberts a uh, pair of rbis uh, and a double uh jolie Kreider, uh Liz palumbo rbi knox as well uh for cmu Haley ferris picked up win number 13 i'll take seven innings seven strikeouts two hits one walk allowed she's on a heat I t- the cmu pitching staff catching its best stride this time of the year frightening quite frightening i yeah. would be frightened i don't yeah. want to i wouldn't want to go to fayette i would not 
yeah, I wouldn't want to go there. I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want to go there. Wait, cat, dude. You check those Cassie Valdez numbers yet? Uh -uh. Check the Cassie Valdez numbers. Are the, they the, hit, the, the hitting numbers are good. I mean, you know, 13 homers, like three yeah, eights. No nah. like a point four ERA, 20 and 0. Good God. Sneaking up on 200 I, strikeouts. I have been on her, been on the Cassie Valdez train all year, but I haven't looked in a while. It's easy for you to be on the Cassie Val Valdez uh, train. You, you had, you were one of the few hitters that actually had a little bit of success against her. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that happened, but every blind squirrel finds a nut. That's right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's talk some Midland softball. Um, another split. I'll tell you what, GPAC. GPAC showing some fight. It's, this may be a, this shaping up to be a little bit interesting. Uh, I think we're uh, the GPAC showing. Hey, not that, when it comes tournament time. This may not be a two horse race. Mm -mm. Nope. And it's always kind of been like that. But Briarcliff and Midland this weekend. Briarcliff gets the split. Um, game one, all Midland, six nothing. Emily Pride, two for four, RBI, two runs. JC Reimers, freshman, two run double um, to kind of open things up a little bit. Ronnie Foot, two for three, two RBIs or an RBI. Maddie Riling, two for four. And Aaliyah Rincon, four hits, five strikeouts, complete game. Um, oh. Game two, though, a little bit closer. Briarcliff wins it three nothing. Kylie Lukes. Um, kind of opens things up in the bottom of the third. She hits a two RBI home run and Karis Gifford hits uh, an RBI double in the bottom of the fifth to extend the lead. That's all she wrote. Midland couldn't get the bats going. I think they recorded just three hits. Um, Georgia Crone in the circle, three hits, complete game with seven strikeouts. Good win yeah. for Briarcliff. Great win. Uh, and they're, they're, they're a uh, first year head coach. Really? Yeah. Um, you know, and heck, we can just stick to the GPAC next because Morningside against Northwestern had uh, another one right there. Uh, little, little Splitsville, uh, uh, opposite this time, it was the underdog, uh, in Morningside getting game one, uh, one nothing. Braylon Biddlecombe, phenomenal six and two thirds shutout ball, uh, only allowed three hits and struck out two. Mackenzie Harrell's solo shot, uh, was all the offense that Morningside would need red raiders uh would get the winning run in scoring position uh but morgan sakura would come out and get out number 21 always that's always the hardest one always the hardest one dude yeah yeah 21 no. else hated it hate it <laughs> <laughs> uh, something i don't know much about but i know i i, I know uh i know 27 outs 21 outs not a fun not a fun one for diamond sport athletes uh-uh yep. no the worst is when coach hits a shot at the middle and they're like Back to zero. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. New. No, New. No, no thanks again. I like football. I like sea ball, kickball, kickball good, ball go far. Kickball bad, ball don't go far. You ever get smoked like someone just absolutely yeah. rocked you? Well, I was – so I wasn't like a traditional like two-step kick it. I was a rugby rugby punter, so I like catch it, and we'd run and run and run and run. I tugged it once. I do have a fake uh -huh. punt. I do. I do. I do have a fake punt. Um, I have to show you, show you the clip. Uh, picked up 16 yards against Faulkner. My fresh, my, not my okay. fresh, my first year here at Weber. Uh, it was my, my first year at Weber. We were 0 and 7. They were six and one, I think number 19 in the country, kind of right there battling, uh, for, for making the, the playoffs that year. And Faulkner came down and I don't know what happened. We just played the best football we played all year. Uh, and in the third quarter, I remember they opened like second play. They scored a touchdown. It was like crap. Uh, they we had like a we had I think we were up like uh, like maybe twenty eight seven at halftime. And then they scored one, make it twenty eight fourteen. And then we went three and out on offense. And so I guess I'm a rugby punter, so I, I would just run. And once I saw pressure, I'd kick it. Well. I have the ability to say go and then um, unhitch the trailer, unhitch the trailer and we're out of there. <laughs> and my, my, you know, my, my three up backs who are the guys kind of in between me and the line, my, the, the guys that aren't getting me murdered by people twice my size, basically, uh, they know the, they know the call and there's a picture. Uh, I'll, I gotta find the picture. I may, maybe I'll put it in YouTube. I don't know, but, um, uh, you can just see my buddy Noah, just turn around, right? When I'm saying go, 
Like, really? <laughs> and uh, we went, went and got 16 yards, uh, and I took a step out of bounds, and I got smoked. I really? mean, oh, yeah, yeah. I'll send you the, the video after, uh, when we get done. I went flying. 15-yard penalty. Uh, got so right, got well, there that. you go. And that was the last time I, I talked to Ram. That was that was <laughs> it. That was it. I then uh okay. do what? Did you get the win? We did. We won 38-35. We scored. Took it for the team. We scored on that drive. We scored on that drive. I was out of breath going out to hold the PAT. I was tired. I was tired as hell. I, <laughs> I was like, I don't do this. I've taken I've used to take like five, six steps and kicking the ball and jogging to the sideline. Um yeah, I got smoked. I had a couple of uh, not so much tackles, but like just kind of got in the way and tripped them up. So, you know, buck seventy five. I wasn't laying anybody out, but you know, we we biting ankles. We're taking out. We're biting kneecaps. No, no blindside. No, no, no. I wasn't taking them to the bus. I wasn't taking nobody <laughs> to the bus. <laughs> no, but no. zero touchdowns allowed in my college career. Come on. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yep. Yeah, I got me reminiscing. I me got me reminiscing <laughs> about about the old warrior days. Good. I uh, do have my coaching hat on now. I do have my yep. coaching hat on. Yep, gonna be do, doing a little GA and gonna be doing a little GA and a little special teams. Get the boys fired up. They don't know what hit them like that. I'm telling you, these kickers aren't ready. Because kickers, we don't do much during practice. We I figured. Do, you know, you usually don't have a coach sitting there. So there's a lot of uh stretching a lot of just kind of waiting for practice to get over coach Harrell's <laughs> going to change that with the Weber kickers uh anyways let's let's get back to NAI softball uh Northwestern uh they they would jump out uh they they, they got a early uh took, took took care of business uh pretty early in this one uh, against Morningside uh Cameron Etherington five and two thirds in the circle uh Kate Kralik would come in the last inning and a third in the four one win Tatum uh, Schmalbeck had at an RBI uh, along with Randy Childress, uh, Maddie Cavett, uh picked up the RBI, and then Gwen Mickelson. Of course, of course, of course, Gwen's gonna get the RBI. Yeah. Gwen Mickelson not being in, in a recap for Northwestern, that'd be wrong. Uh, but they they get the split, but not an easy one. Uh, uh, going to talk about a little bit uh, more midweek, but I'm pretty sure midweek or do they play Briar Cliff this weekend? They play on Thursday, um, so they got Briar Cliff before. Midland, so tough last uh, four games for the Red Raiders heading into the GPAC tournament. Uh, let's yeah. take, let's travel. Let's go to the WAC. So we know who's going to win the WAC, Madonna. Uh, they're now 40 and three on the year. However, Northwestern Ohio, big step, now number two in that conference. Yeah, they take game one, um, absolutely slam the ball. They win 11 0. Big third inning um, for Northwestern Ohio. They drop eight runs. Danny Cayley, two for two, three RBIs. Zoe Johnson, um, two runs, two RBI double. And then RBIs from the Alexander, Ankney, Ed Gold, Schaffer, Alvoid. I mean, pretty much everyone was getting in on the scoring action. Carly Haynes goes the whole game. She allows just two hits, um, strikes out seven. Game two, heck of a game, nine-inning game. Um, Northwestern Ohio would make a push. They tie it in the third or they tie it at three with a D Alexander RBI single. Darian Roberts gets to go ahead and RBI single in the top of the ninth for Aquinas. She goes two for four on the day. Elizabeth Honhorse, two for four. Um, and then some RBIs from Hendrickson and Safford. Sophia Pavise goes the whole game, seven hits, one earned run, two strikeouts. Um, but this win right here really put the racers um, solid sitting at number two. There's 16 and six in the conference, just right behind, well, not right behind, but um they're locked in at two behind the crusaders who are 18 and now yeah i mean indiana tech uh still, still gonna have something uh say about it maybe you know they split with aquinas uh would have been big for them to get two wins or aquinas to get two to keep pressure on own but yeah uh it looks like northwestern ohio sitting there 16 and six great stuff for them big ups uh to nwoh let's take a little look at the midweek starting off today monday uh now it's no Oklahoma City Rogers State, but still a nice little fun NAI versus D two matchup with Middle Georgia and Columbus State. 
That's something to think about. Uh, if you want uh, to get that on Monday, Tuesday is a real busy one uh, for the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday games. A lot of games with conference implications. Uh, of yeah. course, Reinhardt and Johnson in the AAC, Spring Arbor and Iowa. We talked a little bit about earlier in the crossroads. St. Mary, who's been playing some really good softball, picking up wins. They take on the top dogs, Evangel in the KCAC, and the Olu Saints. Now, <laughs> they're 47 and one, not expecting them to lose. However, this is a very solid uh, Houston Victoria squad playing some good uh, softball right now. Kayla, uh, Kayla Lopez, uh, shortstops, uh, ha having a really, really uh, solid year uh, for them. They've got uh, some good pitching. Uh, they can get it done uh, by committee. Um, of course, Cohen, uh, the, kind of their, their top top arm there uh, will be interesting to see. But we mentioned Cassie Valdez. Uh, no, look, <laughs> Coach Lynn. Yeah, all right, Coach L Lynn. Here's your sound bite. Here's your sound bite you can use for motivation. All right. And everybody else, don't listen. You're not allowed. It's just for Co Coach Lynn and his, and his staff. All right. Ready to sound bite in three, two, one. I think the I think the Saints of Our Lady of the Lake are overrated. Stop sound bite. They're very good. They're a really good team. <laughs> they're all right. All right. They, all right. He, he got his sound bite. If he wants to use it, he can use it. But uh, no, they're, they're phenomenal. They're number one team. That, in the country uh this is probably the best team that uh they've played in a little while um since the preseason um so Houston Victoria could definitely get them uh some good games uh, there in the uh, Red River on Tuesday uh kind of two top dogs uh in the Southern States going at it too with William Carey and Mobile mm -hmm. and C CMU against Mo Valley CMU's pretty much wrapped it up but Mo Valley's a good team see see what happens there just we'll see uh who all is going to be playing if uh I'm not 100% sure they, they've wrapped it up, by the way, but I'm like 99.9% .9 sure. They, they've yeah. got four They got four games left, and, I, yeah, and I know everybody's got more than four losses in the heart. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 All right. Got it. Um, so, we'll, we'll, we'll see on that one, but Mo Valley. Mo Valley? Mo Valley's a team. Could very well be that. Could see them going on a little run in the Heart of America tournament. And maybe end up stealing that second at large spot and putting some stress on some uh, other teams right. like ba like Baker and Benedictine and Grandview. Yeah. Um, let's see Wednesday. Speaking of, speaking of Baker Midam Nas, big one. Just uh, mentioned Baker. They've won eight in a row. Pitching's looking great. Kira's, you know, just a scary. Uh, no, we haven't talked about Kira Baker nearly as much this year as we as we did last year. But she's starting to play well. I know they she went knows. through a tough stretch. There was where happened there happened, but they're rolling. They're rolling. Coach Tony's got got a, got that group going. Um, now the same with Mid Am Naz. They picked up two big uh, two big non conference uh, wins earlier against Bellevue. They're uh, trying to they're kind of in that same boat as Mo Valley, trying to get hot, get in the conference tournament, see where they can make shake. Uh, then a big one in the Chicago land, top two, uh, Roosevelt and St. Francis out in that conference. I uh, will, will be squaring off in a big time doubleheader. Remember when I told you all about them Roosevelt Lakers that would have a chance in that conference back in uh -huh. early, mid February. Look at that. Uh -huh. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Guy might know ball. Guy might know ball. Did not jinx up. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> not yet, at least. Not yet. Not yet. You might have. Uh, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Yep. Carly. Um, oh crap. I, for, I meant to tell you, did you listen to the, uh, to the, uh, coach Hewitt and Emily interview? I did a little bit. I was, but not to I, the end. I had I it. No, I had it on in like the background as I was working. Word. I can, I can I, now I can't remember their gas station orders. I want to talk about their gas station orders with you. Oh, I can probably pull it up. No, I'll yeah, because I'll be like, I'll turn on a little podcast or something and put it in my ear when I'm working. Yeah. But the next thing I know, like the episode's over and I didn't hear a word. Feel that. Um, let me see. Oh, I did catch the part where you're talking about kicking the crock. <laughs> uh yeah if y'all didn't if y'all didn't uh, hear me talking about the kick in the crop bit uh kick <laughs> kick in the crop bit uh there at the <laughs> beginning of the last episode it's a good one all right 
Okay, here we go. So I just asked him. All right, Emily gets a little Starbucks frap, the little caramel frap. Okay, okay. Okay. Depends on the mood. Hot fries. Okay, yeah, those are good. Chex Mix. There's some sort of chip, but it looks like hot fries and Chex Mix kind of the top two. Okay, I'm a Gardetto's girl. That's a good one. Oh, Laffy Taffy. She also mentions Laffy Taffy. Strawberry and grape. Not a fan of blue raspberry. That was a little concerning. Yeah, I, I feel like. Justice grape. for grape flavor. Sure. Okay. If you want to, if you want to, if you want to stand on that, I'm not going to knock you off, off of it. Sure. Grape flavor is goaded. I'll say this. Grape juice underrated is sustaining. If grape, if grape juice wouldn't stain so much, I think it could overtake apple juice. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think it could. Yeah. Grape flavored Gatorade. Let's see what coach you would have. We need to keep up. We need to go. We need to go starting with uh, the you company. Make like a little interview. Excel sheet. Well, we got, we got it. We got to get like the best one. Maybe that should be our fifth award. The best gas station order. Maybe, yeah. Maybe we do that. All right. Coach Hewitt. Cheat day. Powder donuts. <laughs> she likes powder donuts. The little, the little, uh, like the little Debbie ones or whatever. Yeah. Those are so Hostess. 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 Is that what it is? Maybe. No free ads. <laughs> Sponsor me. Okay, so it sounds like powder donuts. Let's go one. Let's Respect go one. that. That's a good one. That is a good one. All right. Um, let's see. Any house? So we kind of had our meeting before this. Talk with Connor and Carp. We got a great game plan, ladies and gentlemen. We got a great game plan for um, conference tournament, for opening round, and of course for the World Series really excited there's gonna be a lot of stuff on all platforms go subscribe to the youtube go follow us on instagram go uh follow us on twitter those are gonna be our main three obviously we'll put some stuff out on facebook too but you know um i think pretty much the game the game plan going to be doing a lot on youtube going to be doing a lot on youtube so you need to be subscribed to the youtube it's going to be some live stuff uh that's where obviously we're gonna do a post game interviews Post game interviews are going to be on there. They're going to be on the YouTube. Uh, we'll keep them. Probably post them on our, on our Instagram story too. Um, and then obviously Connor is going to cook up some great graphics. Uh, Carly and I are going to do our little our little social media stuff. I guess I don't know our little Twitter thumbs. Yeah, we're our Twitter thumbs a little bit going. Um, and then Brandon right. Carpenter, Brandon Carpenter with the lens will do his thing. Um, Kayla Mix is going to keep posting TikToks. Uh, Madison White is going to keep uh, doing social media and graphics, and they're both going to keep hitting the softball pretty well, I would assume. But, yeah, it's Should a good be. group. We got a good little group. We got a good group. Yeah, we'll um, postseason comes, we'll be cooking. I can't wait for postseason. I I, I can't wait for postseason, but I'm also sad about postseason because – I know. I feel like it went so fast. I feel like just yesterday we were like, holy crap, this is conference 16. This is conference. Yeah. 10. Yeah. And then all of a sudden here we are, we're talking about, you know, end of conference. Yeah. Teams locking up uh, the regular season, like uh, Cumberland's and CMU have and fun ones down here in the stretch. It's uh good stuff. A lot of good stuff. We'll be back Friday. Hey, must watch, must listen interview. I'll say that it's uh it's it, it, one person that we've had on before. I'll say that. That'll be the teaser. Big one uh, ahead of a big matchup for that team. So highly encourage y'all check it out. It'll be a Friday morning when we come back. Y'all enjoy your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. A lot of good softball. Check it all out on the NAI softball scoreboard on, at NAI.org. And, uh, yeah, y'all have a great week. We'll see you Friday morning.